is almost when we talk about failure, it's almost like an exciting thing. You think, why the hell is Zandiv getting so excited about failure? It's a bad thing. But if you look at this slide in front of you right now, guys, okay, with attention, and I want you to focus. Um, sorry, maybe you could go back one, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, guys, like, like we said, phase three, change how to maintain new habits and avoid slip-ups. Now, look at the last two words there, slip-ups. You've got your pen and paper handy. What we need to do is visualize or write down what comes to your mind. What's the picture that comes to your mind when you see slip up written on the, on, on the slide there or in front of you? Or even when you just think about the idea of a slip up, I'm gonna give you five or 10 seconds just to write some ideas down. What are you visualizing when you see slip up? And Mimi, if you can just move on to the next slide for me, please. So before we go into this, pay attention to your own notepad, guys. I'll tell you what I see when I, um, when I see the word slip up, okay, is there's the word slip, okay, there's a sudden, unexpected connotation involved. We were, we were always talking about semantics, and Mimi talked earlier about words and our association to the words. Don't worry too much about this slide for now. But yeah, slip, something sudden, something unexpected. Um, for me, what I visualize is I'm stepping up a hill or a or an incline, my foot slips. I'm visualizing that. And I'm sure, I, I don't know what you, I'm not gonna, I'm even asking for your ideas, there is no real right or wrong, but you'll have your own visual process of every word that you, that comes through your eyes into your brain, okay? Now, with the slip up, why don't we, what would happen if we eliminate the slip and look at the up? Okay, what does, what is up? What are we doing with up? Up is higher, up is better. Okay, up is the opposite of slipping, isn't it? If I slip, I'm almost falling down, but up is, is almost the opposite. Now, think now, the next question before I go through um, th these boxes here, think about the best people. Again, write your ideas down. The best people you think, so that could be whether it's um, a group of people in a profession, however you want to um, uh, interpret this question, who are the best people at dealing with failure successfully. I'll leave you for about five or 10 seconds to, to write your ideas down. I'm looking for, I'm not gonna ask you again, it's just an internal exercise here. But who are the best people at dealing with failure? When I think of failure, okay, and I think the best people that deal with failure, okay, engineers. Think like an engineer. Okay, we won't go into too much now, aerospace engineering, software engineering, every process an engineer makes or comes up to is based on reliability and to get reliability, to build that process of reliability, you've got to test or fail test every single potential failure scenario. Now I'm not saying to you, write down a list of thousands of failures that could happen, but think like an engineer, prepare for the failure that could happen. Okay, it's so a worst case scenario. So if we look at that, rec if I read out the green box to you here, recognize that slip ups are normal and part of this process. So like we just mentioned, that you guys are doing good workouts, you've made good habits and you're on the way up. Okay, this, there will be a slip up and I don't mean to rain on your parade, I don't mean to be demoralizing, I'm being realistic. There will be times you, you, when you will not maintain that constant upward, upward curve. And that's fine. Just be aware of it. Learn to recognize the cue. This is why journaling at the beginning when Maureen mentioned writing your, uh, your thoughts, your food, your mood, your exercise, when you go back to looking at trends, at what caused you to slip up, for example, I use myself as an example. Um, I realized, maybe I knew this and maybe I didn't, but I realized stress, whether it's work-related, family-related, training-related, an excess of stress, too much of it, um, caused me to, to, to reach out for the donuts, the, the, the biscuits and so forth. I probably knew it deep down, but until I journaled it and I looked back and looked at the trends on the days where I was binge eating or eating junk food, there was a correlation, a direct cor correlation between how I was feeling in terms of my emotions, the stress and the output there. So those two things are are key for you guys so for here preparing for the failure knowing that the slip up will happen but let's change it let's not work on the, let's not think about the slip 
let's think about the up, what's going to happen from, from the up if it does happen. All right, Maury, uh, Mimi, can I have the next slide, please? This is key here, guys, okay? And I'll run through these three. They, they are critical live vital. If you do miss a day, if you end up having that biscuit, like more, Mimi just said, you do that 10 minute rule, which is uh, scientifically proven. It's a well-renowned, it's a famous 10 uh, minute rule. And after that, if, if it means that you have to still go and binge or you go still have to have that, uh, that biscuit or whatever, it's fine, but you make that habit, okay? So, but if you do end up doing it, it's fine. You pick it up the next day. Not a problem whatsoever. And it works in line with your workouts as well. You missed a workout on one day or you couldn't make it. There were a number of different factors. But, you know, thinking like an engineer, thinking about, you know, that is one of the failures that could happen. What are you going to do about it? And then you don't get that sudden shock, unexpected factor of, of the slip. Uh, the emotion, food, emotion journal, I mentioned to you guys, well, this is critical. A lot of people are saying this now. Depression is the number one mental health um, diagnosis in the UK. And most people who have that or who work with people with de depression advocate journaling your thoughts and journaling your, your emotions because when you look back on it, you realize, okay, there is a link. That might be one of your triggers. But also, like what Mimi said, it helps you to dissociate, create space between that emotion, which in, in, in blunt terms, Mimi said, is it, it, fake, it's not real, and the reality. And it's, it's, it's key for you there. And discipline and consistency are going to be built through habits, through action, not by you saying it, not by you thinking you're going to do it, not by researching, by actually putting those things together and then put, putting it into, into place. So every action you're doing is slowly, slowly building your discipline and discipline lasts, like uh, Mimi mentioned before as well, emotions come and go, motivation comes and goes every day. Some days you'll feel you know, like you can tackle the world and some days you feel like you don't want to, and that's totally normal. But the underlying discipline from that, which will go from your training to your eating, to other areas of life, um, it, it, that, that is how, how we're going to build it. Uh, can I have the next slide, please, um, Mimi? All right, before we, uh, before we close it up here, this <laughs> slide for my favorite part, right? So uh, contrary to the 10-minute uh, rule where you go and do something you love, there's also the punishment before reward technique. Okay, so there Mimi has put, this had no input for me, by the way. I wouldn't choose burpees, why would I? But if you're going to get that craving for a biscuit or a chocolate, you put in place something that you're going to do before that. And that is exactly leading to the previous point that I made with the, with the habit. Okay, so that once that becomes a habit for you, okay, so for example, I feel stressed. I want to go and grab a biscuit. Okay, normally my routine would be I walk to the cupboard, open it, grab and, and done. Whereas if my routine becomes, right, I've, I'm stressed, I feel like having that biscuit, but you know what, I'm going to do 30 burpees first, or 30 squats, something that you absolutely hate. Burpees for me wouldn't be a punishment, by the way. But um, if you do that, and it becomes habit, you never know, from, from that habitual action, you may lose the desire to do the, the routine of going to the cupboard and grabbing uh, a biscuit. Again, these are tried and tested things. You, it may work for you, and it may, may not. And I'm just going to close up here now, guys, before I hand back over to Mimi with a quite a powerful, I guess, a metaphor and how I can help you visualize the first step to embracing failure is how you view success and failure when it comes to your diet. Success, think of it as you're there. So imagine um, if I pick someone, Beata, don't worry, I'm not going to unmute you. You're there at home, someone comes to you and hands you a pot of gold. Okay, a pot of gold in your hands, that's, in, that's the, our way of thinking of success. Someone's handed you something, someone's given you something, you've got a promotion at work, you've got more money, you've, um, you've come to a trainer who's gonna get you a great body. Okay, that's how we view success. It's something you can put in your hands, in your hands. you can turn it, you can look at it, you can explore it, it's tangible and it's easy, like what we said earlier. It's the easier, the quicker way for your brain to release dopamine, okay? That pot of gold in your hands. Failure in your mind, on the contrary, is the way you think of it is, think of the deepest mine, the deepest gold mine in the world, okay? Four kilometers, five kilometers down. You can't see it, okay? But there's infinite gold down there. It's not the guy that's come to you and just handed you a pot of gold, okay? It requires digging, it requires 
failure. It requires your tools going to pot, your tools breaking and you getting new tools. And it requires constant failure, constant shipping, and actually re-evaluating and then continuing, with, continuing on with your process. But once you get there, that what you have is something that you've learned yourself and it will stay with you. It's infinite. It doesn't go anywhere. And we're a species, last closing bit from you guys, we're a species as humans who have evolved, who have got to where we are through evolution. And our key evolutionary thing is teaching our successes, learning from our failures and teaching our successes to next generations, whether that's you doing what you do at work, whether it's us teaching you what we've learned from, pri uh, from previous experiences, whether it's a teacher, whether you're teaching your, your, your kids. We've got to this stage as species by learning from failure and teaching successes. So it is critical that we switch the way we think and not view, okay, success is the ultimate goal. Yes, I agree. But failure is not your enemy. Okay, so something that's, uh, that's uh, worth thinking about. We'll take questions on that at the end. I'm going to give back to Mimi. I hope you found that inf uh, informative, but also useful as well. Hopefully that's going to be something that you can implement. And like I mentioned at the beginning, it's the first step to you thinking. It may not work straight away, but it's the first step for you. you you're changing your thought process and how you view slip-ups or failures. So remember, slip up for a reason. It's up. All right, guys. Back to you, Mimi. Thank you.